Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining the Lunch and Learn today. My name is Will Pedersen. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the Q&A section, ask them in the chat, or just use the raise hand uh, feature, and we will allow you to unmute and ask your question. We don't have any pre-submitted questions today. So if you have a question, please let us know. Hello. Hey. Uh, so my question is regarding the forms. Okay. So, uh, in my form, I have added one drop down and given a static list of values. So, when I select a value from the drop down, mm -hmm. that value is editable. So, I want that value to be editable. Hmm. Hold on. Okay. That sounds like that sounds wrong. That sounds like it shouldn't be. Let me see here. So you have a flow, and in that flow you have form. You said you have a static drop-down list. So here's a drop-down and a button, and here is a static drop-down list with a with hello world sometime. Let's just select an item. Okay. Now, if I run this, so I can select world. Yeah. Is, is that the question? You can actually, you, you're, it's like you can edit it, but it doesn't actually edit. Does that make sense? So like right now I can actually type some text into it, which is kind of odd, um, admittedly, but it doesn't actually allow me to change the value of the, like, so here I've selected a world. I'll go ahead and select world. I can type in one, but if I submit it and I look in the debugger here on the output data of my form, the output value is world. It doesn't actually accept that change but it does show up as like an editable type control, which is admittedly not perfect. I wonder if you allow external values, if it lets you type in though. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. Um, is Am I answering your question? Yeah, so I'm asking, is there any way that uh, that value is not editable? Is there an option to make that? Yeah, well, if you see, um, you can't actually, you can, it, it appears to be editable, but it's not actually editable. Now, if we want to try to prevent you from typing in, I'm sure that we can use a, a like a CSS class of some sort to prevent you from clicking into it. But we would probably have to write some CSS to see if we can prevent you from clicking in um, to the dropdown list. But either way, but um, so if you need, if you're worried about the user experience, then you can use CSS for that. But if you're worried about data entry, you cannot like, you cannot actually, you cannot actually type in a value and submit it. Here you'll notice like no matter what I type in or replace. In fact, if I, what if I replace the whole thing? So if I, if I come in here and type in ASDF and click submit, it won't even validate it. But if I select world, which is one of the options and click one, it'll let me submit it, but it won't, 
it, this, it doesn't actually ex accept the edited data. It only, ex it only accepts the selected item. But if you're worried about the user experience, then I'm sure we can find a way using CSS, some custom CSS to prevent a user from actually being able to click into the drop-down list as uh, to be able to edit it. Does that help? Yeah. Thank you. And if you do need the option to do that, there is a setting here on the drop-down list called allow external values to be selected. And that would let you type in anything and accept it. So just a note. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Who else has got questions for us today? I mean, admittedly, you shouldn't be able to even click into it, I guess, without needing to use CSS. I'd uh, be hard pressed not to to dis disagree. Hey, go ahead, David. What you got? Um, this may this may be ridiculous, as are most of my questions. Um, but I was trying to make a way to basically restart uh, the service host manager from mm -hmm. a flow. Yeah, and I think there was, if I remember right, there was there was some way you could do it through the UI, but it. I think I'd asked this long ago. It, it didn't exactly do what I wanted it to do. And basically the 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 thing that I came to is, well, we just need to go to services and re restart the, the actual service, right? Um, so I my thought was, well, I can just do that with a PowerShell script. Yeah, sure. Um, so I made one that it, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's literally called re restart service, right? Um, mm -hmm. You pass it a name and I created my PowerShell project and a script to do that, loaded it up. And then I, I debugged it and it's like, it will, um, it'll do it. And it like, when I go to the, when I go to the services manager, it, looks like it tries to start up, but it basically just stops it instead of restarting it. And my thought was, well, 
it's probably because I'm, I'm, as soon as I do that, I'm basically stopping that flow. So maybe it doesn't know what to do or possibly it's a debugger thing. So I try to run it independently and same thing. Um, so I guess I was wondering, will this restart instance step actually, will that restart the, the basically the, the actual service? Does that make well, sense? I don't know. Um, I mean, what version? This is on six or below, right? Yeah, we're on 615, I think. Well, if you try to stop it, the serv is the service host manager watcher running? Uh, we have that set to manual at the moment. So that was one of my thoughts is, well, if I enable the watcher and just stop mm -hmm. it, it should automatically restart it. Um, yeah, correct. And that then, sounds like the ticket to fix your issue. So the Keep other, your, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the other thing that I thought about doing and tell me what you think about this is I basically have a, a batch file loaded in the flow as a constant, right? But mm -hmm, it's sure. but it's a text file because it won't take a dot bat extension, right? Mm -hmm. So I basically just do I check for the existence of it in a folder structure on that machine. Mm -hmm. I save that batch file as a dot bat, and then I just have a PowerShell script to start process mm -hmm. where it executes that basically outside, like the flow has right. no knowledge of it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should be fun. I mean, if you need to restart, I would just say I the problem is probably I, I mean, there's no danger and it takes up basically no resources to run the watcher. Okay. So I would leave, I would have the watcher be running and then you just run a kill command on the service. Yeah. Right. And then it'll the, will, the watcher will restart it in short order. Okay. Yeah. I think our devs told us to put that. To, I'll, let me, I'm going to circle back with them and ask them because they, apparently there was a reason they wanted it set to, to manual, which I don't know, maybe I don't fully understand, but I mean, that, that would be the path of least resistance, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Anything else you got? see what I've been working on over the past week and see if I have any questions about it here real quick. No, I just don't want to run this flow. I'm going to delete this stuff. <laughs> it's not to do that. Oh, uh, okay. So if I, so I want to load up uh, a, the, I guess the inertia, like a custom module, right? Mm-hmm. Do I, I guess, order of operations with this? If I were to, so I create a flow that says, go grab me these custom modules out of a directory and drop them into mm -hmm. the, the decisions custom modules folder. Mm -hmm. Once okay. they're in there, I need to do a restart in order for it to recognize that they're there and put it where it needs to go. And then I need to install them and then restart again so that it actually takes the fact that it installed that i, I think all you need to do if this is a custom module specifically yeah i think what all you have to do is put it in custom modules put the same zip in custom and in the root modules directory and then restart okay i think because that's what it would do, right? Like there's if I, also, yeah. If I just threw it in the custom one and restart it, it's going to look at that and it's going to say, "Oh, I need to copy this over to the the root modules directory." Well, and extract it too, probably. There's also an old text file um, at root inside decision server directory, like or, or decision, sorry, in decision services manager directory called modules to install and startup.txt. And without the path, without the extension, I think you might be able to use this as well. And would this apply to, so I assume this would easily work if I wanted to install the PowerShell module on startup and just put decisions.powershell in there, right? Um, mm -hmm. would, would this For also sure. apply to custom modules? Would it know how to do that? I think as long as the that zip is in the module directory, 
And then that zip file name is in this text file? Yes, I think. Hmm. I'm not certain. Not 100%, I think so. But I can't remember why we added the custom modules for directory piece specifically. I noticed that and I was kind of questioning that a little bit too, because when, as I've installed these, I've noticed that it, it basically just ports it over into the, mm -hmm. into the other thing as a zip. And then it looks like it, it extracts it too. Mm -hmm. so I guess I was wondering. It, the actual I, extraction just occurs on restart though. Like you could go in there and delete any of the, the directories in the modules directory. Mm -hmm. And then when you restart, it's going to find the zip and unpack the zip into the, into the same directory. The extraction is happening just sort of separately from, I think it was so you had to click install in the GUI. But I don't know what happens if you just put it directly into the custom, into, into the modules directory, or if it's in both. Yeah, um, I figured, I, I figured what would happen was if I stuck it in there, it would then, and it would then show up as an available module to install, but then I would still need to go hit the install button, which mm -hmm. I think I'm also, I, I think there's a step that you can install module and it has to be the specific name of it that you can do it through a flow also rather than going through the UI. Yeah, so I think one of those options will work if you need to get it like done okay. like automatically i got you but there's no harm in in moving it over to that restarting doing it installing it and then restarting again that's like i mean is that the safest way to do it mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah okay. there's no there's no harm there got it okay that's awesome Anything else you got for us today? I think these other ones, I think I'm okay on. Um, Cause we can, whenever we, ins well, whenever some of our people install these, it's not always configured for HTTPS. So I wrote a PowerShell script to basically do the IIS bindings, restart the site. Mm -hmm manipulate the settings and web config file to be able to handle that. And I think it's just a matter of putting everything in the right order. And I think that's probably it for today. Yeah, that's it. That's it for today? Yep, appreciate it. How are you bet, man? Happy to help anytime. Any other questions from anyone today? I'll just hang out till 12.30 if um, anyone's got any questions or if anyone else joins.
Did my share just go away? I still see it. Same page? Uh, I got flow one, flow two, form. Oh, okay. Weird. My whole browser just crashed. Yet it somehow kept my share going. Gotcha. Um, okay. I got another one for you. Um, yeah, sure, man. Is there a way to, I mean, I know there's a way, like, is there a, a native way or a native step to take uh, a Boolean to an actual true or false string? Or do I just make a converter flow and do it that way? Mm. You want it, like you actually need a string as an output? Yeah, so uh, some of these settings, like when we deploy it at a client, some of their right. like their server name and stuff is going to be different. So when I'm going to go into, uh, I don't mm -hmm. know, like the, like the settings file, for example, and say there's something I need marked as true or something <laughs> false, like I mm -hmm. actually as true or false in that XML, but from an interface or a it, like a get it from a workbook standpoint i guess i'd like it to be just a boolean uh for that so i want to be able to translate one or zero to actual true or false right mm -hmm. um i would say if you if you're using like a d if you have like the settings file as an xml object like an xml data type and you're or you're using like a serialized a deserialized step yeah so that that's a i guess that's another thing um i tried that to bring that into mm -hmm. the, bring it in as a to create a data type from xml it tells me that there's no it tells me it can't do xml as an output without a namespace attribute mm. gotcha and I was like, well, that's kind of weird. Cause if you open that up, like it, it is, it looks to me like it's designating a, the namespace. So I'm not sure why that was happening, but it, I guess my way around that is I just, I just got a string from bytes and then do an extract text between the tags to do a replace on what the value currently is to what I want it to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, so uh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I would just, yeah, it would just be taking a bool with like a true false rule, right? And on the true path, you have a create data step that says, sets the string to true. A string. And on the fast, on the fast, on the false, it sets it to string false and then outputs, you know, it outputs a thing called output, which is either, you know, in it is the value returned by whichever of the paths it ends up going down. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That's kind of where I was going to go. I just wondered if there was like a native step or converter flow that saved me like 10 minutes of work. Ah, <laughs> uh, maybe, may, I don't think so. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, converter. Converter flow. Sorry, I'm lazy. Convert string to bool. That's the opposite of what you need. Yeah. What do they do in this one? Oh God, string equals true, convert to true. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately not. Oh, okay, I got you. All right, well, I'll just make, I'll just make a converter for it then, it's totally fine. A trim string, just has a trim string set. Wonderful, I haven't looked inside these in ages. Convert string to byte array, get bytes from string. Um, yeah, I guess I'm curious if, if, if you don't mind, I guess if we have time to investigate putting the, uh, trying to grab that settings thing into an actual, like XML, into an actual data type, I'm, I'm curious what, what your thoughts are on that. Um, how to actually get it as an XML? I mean, I, I, I guess I'm just wondering why I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, see up there where it says XML NS, it looks like it's establishing it there. Mm -hmm. But when I try so, to create a when I try to create a a data type based on that, yeah, exactly. I think you just give it a name. 
This XML cannot be used as XML. Yeah, that's okay. We don't. Is it this piece at the bottom that you've read? That's the yeah, problem? That, yeah, that's the exact thing. That's the exact thing that I get. Um, yeah, I, I actually don't know what it's asking for. But if we I can hit, still create it. Right? Yeah, and if I hit create, I thought it... Oops, so... I'm putting this in my converter flows folder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize what it so, was. Yeah. Go ahead. So it gives us ASDF right there. Mm -hmm. If I pull that into a flow, it's almost like it, it just gives me a like a list of objects, but mm, I know there are some nested things in that XML. I would have expected to get some other, other data types in there, right? Settings, it's gotta be, yeah, it's settings here. Object to serialize, build data, ask for the properties. I wonder if you just had a problem getting it compiled. Hmm. Like this looks right to me. If I do the, let's say if I pick the property for mail, because there are several, there are some things nested in mail, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, sure. Let's see. Mail, yeah, it tells us it's a settings mail object. We build data and it's gonna give us that. And then we build data, it's gonna give us that. Interesting, okay. Yeah, so, I wonder if I... You actually got it. It's a, it was showing as objects, like in the flow designer. Yeah. That could be... Um, and did, that could just be an indication of like a bad compilation. I mean, it would force like a new compile or something. You're okay. having some compile yeah, issue let that me, you didn't... Let me go down that path. Yeah, okay. Let me recheck that. Because that looks like what... It looks like it's doing what we needed to do there. Interesting. For some reason, I thought it would give me another another type, like in this nested thing right here. Like it would have given me a structure for the SMTP server and a structure for mail. You know it, what I mean? It, it does, right? Are you saying that? Right. So here you can see settings mail is type one of the mail object or settings mail SMTP server for the SMTP server. Uh, so, right. So, in, so yes, this, this is settings. So a settings object has a settings mail object, which has a settings mail SMTP server object inside oh, of it. It'll, it'll give you all of that nesting for sure. Okay. I guess I was expecting to see those things in the, um, where, where we created it at, but it looks like it, it will do it and it knows. Okay. All right. And then you could access these, like if you wanted to have like a, like on a create data step, we should be able to find settings, mail, SMTP server. Like if we just want to deal with that one individually. So if I remember settings, mail, SMTP server. So there's that type and we can call this okay. the mail server. And then on the mail server, boom, now we can map mail server to Okay, okay. Right, to the mail server. And then we do, can do build data here, make it easier to deal with so we don't have all those properties together if we need to. Oh, okay. And then if I manipulate those, uh, once I get to the end, you just re... You just re-serialize that. Yeah, exactly. XML, and then I'll put that to a, the, a file, right? Yeah, theoretically, yep. I've never done that with the settings file, but that, assuming it's just an XML file, Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me go back. So assuming, and... yeah, assuming no oddities from, uh, like, from uh, any of the encrypted like strings inside of it, be creating problems, right. um, or getting re-encrypted in some way that causes problems, then um, it should be fun. I got gotcha. you. Okay. I'm not saying that. I'm. I'm just. That, that's. There could be something squirrely there, but it should be. It should yeah. Be yeah. Okay, I'll go back and relook at that. Okay. 
anybody else got anything for us today? All righty. That's everything for today, then. Well, it looks like we just creeped over 1230. Go ahead and call it an afternoon. Oh, excuse me. All right. Thanks, everybody. We I will see you tomorrow. Same time.